gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. Fantastic. Really, really, you must stop now. Really. <laughs> you bastards. You didn't mean it at all. <laughs> I'm rather intrigued. The audience this evening are very attractive. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> One or two are hideous to me. <laughs> I shan't say which ones yet. The ones that displease me shall be punished <laughs> with this finger. <laughs> wait, wait! It's not a punishment if you get excited and clap about it! <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody! Yes, yeah. It is Friday, of course! Yes! Friday! Labor Day Friday! Thank you! It's the uh, first week in our studio is uh, is done. We have five shows done, two jokes in that five days. But... <laughs> and uh, it's been it's amazing this week that the Guinness Book of Records staged a photo shoot with the world's shortest man and the world's shortest woman. <laughs> Isn't that adorable. They flew them both to be Italy to be photographed together. It didn't cost much because they could both be stored in the overhead locker, but they. <laughs> It was the first time. You have to be careful because, you know, when you, you land, because you could come, uh, they, uh, fall out. And... I know. But the... <laughs> Most adorable accident ever. But it was the, it's the first time the world's shortest man and the world's shortest woman have ever met. And we have the picture. Do we, can we see it? There you are. Look at that. Aren't they adorable? Now, it is, of course, it is, of course, a big Labor Day weekend. The last weekend of the summer. There's only one, one last, last day. This is it. This is, and then it's the summer's over. And I'm going to do what every American uh, should do this weekend. I am going to stay indoors and watch Doctor Who. <laughs> yes, tomorrow night on BBC America is the season premiere of Doctor Who. Now, a lot, of, a lot of people in America don't give a rat's ass about Doctor Who. And to these people, I say, okay. <laughs> But I grew up with it. Doctor Who is a British television show. It's been on in Britain for 50 years. It is the British equivalent of Larry King. <laughs> and not all British TV is good like Doctor Who. I mean, a lot of it like, is crap, like television the world over. And I saw a lot of British television lately because I was in Scotland while they were finishing this studio, which, you know, I wasn't going long enough. Finished in places, but back there it's like an abandoned bomb shelter. It's just an empty broom closet and bundles of Drew Carey's old back fat. <laughs> They've got to store it somewhere. Do not applaud back fat. What the hell is wrong with you? Ah, back fat. What's wrong with you? Back fat shouldn't be applauded. You should go, oh. I always forget that Brit you know, what British TV is like, because I'm used to TV here now. I've lived here for a long time. But I forget in Britain, all the news reporters and TV hosts, they all do talk the same way. They start a sentence like this, and then they end it like that. <laughs> they start talking up high, and then they go down low. <laughs> we now go to Buckingham Palace, where the Queen is waving. <laughs> here comes Prince Harry, and he's not wearing any pants. <laughs> Or trousers, I should say. <laughs> I watched the Olympics when I was over in Britain on TV and it was fantastic because the reporters in Britain are not shy about who they wanted to win. I think we should have been like that in America. Don't be impartial. You want your guys to win. Don't you? you and that, that's what the BBC, it was great. 
<laughs> in, in the Olympic coverage in the BBC, they made no attempt to be fair at all. <laughs> they were like, and it appears a team of Great Britain swimmers are in last place. America has won. But I think we swam the more dignified race. Uh, <laughs> no British swimmers drowned at all. Uh, our boys deserve a gold medal forever. In fact, hooray, Britain is number one. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you go, girl. Mm-mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, Doctor Who I'm talking about. Anyway, because Doctor Who's getting popular in America now. It was the most downloaded show on iTunes last year. And I'm like, what? People download stuff that's not pornography? <laughs> I'm like... Doctor Who was slow to catch on in America, but that's okay. Some American things are slow to catch on in Britain. You know, bubblegum, optimism, oral hygiene. These things <laughs> have taken years. <laughs> have you never seen Doctor Who? It's about a doctor who travels through time helping people. Imagine uh, Doctor Phil if he could travel and <laughs> through time. And, uh, and, and he actually helped people. <laughs> and, and if he was a real <laughs> doctor. Uh, <laughs> so, in fact... Oh, I'm a bit cussy tonight, aren't I? Yeah, I think I'm settling into the new studio. I'm beginning to enjoy myself. I'm beginning to relax and let it all hang out. <laughs> anyway, the Doctor Who. There's 11 different actors have played the Doctor, and they explain it by saying the character of the Doctor regenerates into a different body. It usually happens around the time the actor playing him wants more money. <laughs> Much like the world of late-night talk shows in America. <laughs> I'm still here because I'm cheap. But some fans get upset when the show changes actors. They get used to seeing a particular phrase, and then suddenly there's a whole new one. It's, it, I know how you feel. I feel the same way about Cher. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love Cher. She's an American treasure. We got that picture of Cher? There she is, yeah. <laughs> no. You know, we showed that picture a lot in the old studio. I think we should gussy it up for the new studio. If you gussy, gussy it up. There you go. How about that? You know, when I was a, a kid in the 1970s, the Doctor, the character of the Doctor in Doctor Who was played by Tom Baker. You got a picture of Tom Baker? There he is. Now, now, now I miss that guy. I loved it. He was known for his very long scarf. But the kids now, the geeks and the nerds and the people that go, they love, they all wear the scarf now. It's popular with the young folk, with the young interns here. Have you got, where's the interns with their scarves? Come on out. Yep, see? Look, they wear them all the time. <laughs> Neither one of these kids needs a scarf that big. You see that? <laughs> Get out of here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back out of here. Back out of here. <laughs> Do you, uh... <laughs> you watch, uh, you follow Doctor Who, Jeff? Do you watch Doctor Who? That got me rather excited in my pants. <laughs> I've got to tell you, Jeff, when I saw the interns wearing scar scar scarves and no trousers, I thought to myself, Jeff's going to enjoy this. <laughs> and I was right. <laughs> My friend Craig Ferguson is a creepy old man. <laughs> it's true, but at least I'm human and have blood. <laughs> I will watch you tonight while you sleep. <laughs> hey, want to look at the horse? Oh, yeah. All right, let's look at the horse. <laughs> all right, all right, that's enough creepy horse. Now let's look at the horse again. Let's look at the horse again with porn music. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's quality entertainment right there, right there. You, uh, you... Is he playing an instrument behind that door? He's playing something. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, then. We'll return with more of the Terribly Late program and back fat.